morning students today we will start a new poem 2.3 the worm children before we start the poem let's discuss the warming up questions first the first question is worms play a very important role in maintaining ecological balance they are friends of farmers form groups and discuss the significance of worms in the above two roles answer is worms loosen the soil bring up fertile soil turn organic garbage into organic fertilizers and provide proteins etc i repeat worms loosen the soil bring up fertile soil turn organic garbage into organic fertilizers and provide proteins etc question number 2 is think and write down how the following creatures can be useful the first is dragonfly dragonfly eats mosquitoes and flies controls unwanted insects i repeat dragonfly eats mosquitoes and flies controls unwanted insects the next is spider spider keeps insect population under control i repeat spider keeps insect population under control the next is third one ants ants turn and aerate the soil help in seed dispersal i repeat ants turn and aerate the soil help in seed dispersal the next is honey bees honey bees provide honey help in pollination i repeat honey bees provide honey and help in pollination the last is earthworms earthworms loosen the soil and turn organic garbage into fertilizers i repeat earthworms loosen the soil and turn organic garbage into fertilizer the next third question is little creatures in nature can also be your teachers think and write what we can learn from the following the first is bees bees teaches us to be organized hard work self sacrifice i repeat bees organization hard work self sacrifice next is ants teamwork hard work discipline i repeat ants teamwork hard work discipline next is spider patience perseverance i repeat spider patience and perseverance next is last caterpillars patience and acceptance of change i repeat caterpillars patience and acceptance of change children now here we will stop and take a break of 1 minute and we'll meet in the next video thank you let's come back to the poem children 2.3 the worm first i will tell you the paraphrase of the poem the worm the poem the worm talks about valuing life in its smallest and most and appealing of forms The poem begins by a direct address by the poet who tells the reader to step carefully lest he crush a worm. He adds that although the worm merits our contempt yet the creator made him with lots of love. The poet asks the reader to acknowledge and respect the fact that the one who made us is also the one responsible for making the worm. The poet adds that not only has the creator generously gifted the sun the moon and the stars to all his creatures but he has himself laid out the green grass both for the worm as well as for mankind on behalf of the tiny beings the poet appeals to the, to the reader to let them enjoy their short life well and not kill them we should not take away that which we are incapable of giving namely life so now children the poem the worm is written by the poet thomas gisbrin thomas Gis gisbrin was born on 31st october 1758 and died on 24th march 1846 at yorkshire that is united nations he was an english anglian priest and poet he was a member of the clapham sect 
who fought for the abolition of the slave trade in England. Now children will read the poem stanza wise. The first line, turn, turn thy hasty foot aside. Children here, thy means your and hasty means hurried. Turn, turn your hurried foot aside, nor crush that helpless worm means. In this poem, the poet tells the reader who is in hurry to turn his foot aside so that he does not crush the helpless worm. The frame thy scornful looks deride. Means children, the structure or the appearance of the worm, which may look scornful, means filled with hate or deride, means hatred, required a god to form, means it was needed by the god to form or to create. So it was created by the god. Now, in the second stanza, the common Lord of all that move means the common God or the same God of all that move on this earth, that is you and me, all those who exist on this earth, from whom thy being flowed means from whom your life existence flows, means you are also created by the same God. So a portion of his boundless love on that poor worm bestowed. Children, your bestowed means given as gift. So the poet here says that a portion of his boundless love means unlimited love is bestowed or you can say given as gift or given to that poor worm. So now children, we will stop here and take a break of one minute. Thank you. Children, let's continue the poem, The Worm. We were on stanza third. The sun, the moon, the stars, he made to all his creatures free. Means children, the poet wants to tell his readers that God has given the sun, the moon and the stars free to all his creatures he has created and spreads over earth the grassy blade for worms as well as thee means further the poet tells us that God has spread the grass that grows over the earth was made for worms as well as for us that is we human beings. Now in the fourth stanza let them enjoy their little day their lowly bliss received means further poet request or appeal to the reader that let them enjoy their little day means their brief life span with their lowly bliss means with their humble pleasure children here lowly bliss means humble pleasure now in the next line do not lightly take away the life thou canst not give children here in the last line canst means old form of can so the poet tells us or urge, urges us, us to not lightly take away, means do not take away the life. Thou canst not give, means which we cannot give back. Children here, thou means you, it is the old form of you. So the poet in the end urges or requests the readers not to take away the life which we canst or cannot give back, that we cannot give back. So now we have completed, completed the poem over here. Now let's discuss the textual question answers. The first is read the poem aloud and you will find some out, old outdated words that we don't, do not use in everyday language now. However, some writers, poets use them to impart an old fashioned flavor to suit the background of their writer. Such words are called archaic words. So now give the modern words or the archaic words from the poem. The first word is thy. Thy is the old form of your. Next is being. Being is the old form of life. Next is bestowed. Bestowed means children gifted or given as a gift. Next is thee. That is the old form of you. Thou is also the old form of you. Kanst is the old form of can. 
Now, the next question is, the poet uses a device where he directly addresses someone absent or abstract. Such a device in the figures of speech called is apostrophe. Say for example, turn, turn thy hasty foot aside. Pick out any two other lines from the poem that contains an apostrophe. The first example children you can take here is, let them enjoy their day. Because here, the person or the object to whom the writer is or the poet is directly addressing is absent, is not present. So, we can conclude here that the figures of speech is apostrophe. Next example we can take, do not lightly take away the life thou canst give not give. Here also the figures of speech is apostrophe and one more we can conclude here that is exclamation. Now children, we will stop here and we will take a break of one minute. Thank you. We were discussing the textual question answers. We were on question number three. Why does the poet appeal to us to respect the life of worm? And the answer is, the poet appeals to us to respect the life of worm because however abominable it may look, it is also a creation of God. I repeat, the poet appeals to us to respect the life of worm because however abominable it may look, it is also a creation of God. Now, question number B. Why do you think God created worms? What is their ecological importance? And the answer is, every little creature in this world has a distinct role to play ecological balance. God, the creator, has assigned a place and a particular role to all his creations. Worms, too, play a vital role in maintaining ecological balance and improving soil quality, thus aiding agriculture. I repeat, Every little creature in this world has a distinct role to play ecological balance. God, the creator, has assigned a place and a particular role to all his creations. Worms, too, play a vital role in maintaining ecological balance and improving soil quality, thus aiding agriculture. Next question number C. Live and let live is a famous proverb. Which lines from the poem support this proverb and the answer is let them enjoy their little day the lowly bliss received oh do not lightly take away the life then can't not give i repeat let them enjoy the little day their lowly bliss received oh do not lightly take away the life then can't not give next question number d does the poem urge us to protect only worms what is the general message conveyed through this poem? And the answer is, though the poem is about the worm, the general message is that God has created all the creatures on earth, big and small. And every creature has a role to play. All beings have equal rights over the bounties of the earth. No one can take away the life that he or she cannot give. I repeat, though the poem is about the worm, the general message is that God has created all the creatures on earth, big and small, and every creature has a role to play. All beings have equal rights over the bounties of the earth. No one can take away a life that he or she cannot give. So children, here we have completed lesson number 2.3, poem, The Worm. Now after this, you'll get the PDF, copied on all the question answers in the notebook, and we'll take a break now. Thank you.